there. Welcome. You're tuned in to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 547. Today, we're going to talk about resuming training after you've taken a bit of a break. If you're unfamiliar with my name, I'm Jeremy Lesnick. I'm your host for the show. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick. Today, I'm joined by Andrew Adams. And everything that we're doing here at Whistlekick is in support of the traditional martial arts. If you want to see everything we do, all the things that encompass that endeavor, go to whistlekick.com. That's our online home, our digital hub. It's the place you're going to find everything we're involved in, including the stuff we make for you to buy. It's one of the ways that we fund or at least defray, defray, defer, offset <laughs> some of the expenses here for this show because it's not free. And if you use the code podcast15, it lets us know that you're making a purchase because of the show and you're also going to save 15% when you do. If you want to check out stuff for the show, the show has its own website, Whistlekick, martialartsradio.com. We bring the show twice a week. And the goal of the show is to connect, to educate, to entertain traditional martial artists throughout the world. If you want to help the show and the work that we do, there are plenty of ways you can do that. Like I said, you can make a purchase. You could also share an episode, follow us on social media. We're at Whistlekick everywhere you could imagine. Tell a friend about what we're working on. Pick up one of our books on Amazon. Leave a review somewhere or support the Patreon. Patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Whistlekick. It's a place to go for that. You can support us monthly with as little as $2. And the more you're willing to contribute, the more we're going to give you back in terms of exclusive content, discounts, free books, all kinds of great stuff. Well, as I said, today I'm joined by my co-host. Yeah, I like that word. You good with that word? Yeah, my, my co-host, Andrew. And today we're talking about picking up your training again, whether it's because your school closed or, you know, you got mono or went on a work trip. And I'm sure we could come up with a, a pretty long and, and even comical list of reasons people stop training. But getting going again can be tough. Can have you ever, you ever been in a spot where you had to take a break and then start back up again? Uh, multiple times for, and my breaks were multiple years. Mm. It's got to be, and and I'll be honest, I haven't really had to do this. I, I did sort of take a break in there, but I don't know that I can speak to this one so well. So I, I kind of, kind of want to hear more from you. Tell us about the first time you had to take a multi-year break. Well, I started training in high school, probably around 19, late 80s, 89, maybe early 90s. And I was in high school and trained all through high school. And when I left for college, I would come back from college for Thanksgiving break and for the summers and would continue to train. But during the school year, for the most part, I wasn't doing any training. I don't consider that a break. But after uh, I left college, I moved out and had my own apartment and had to pay my own rent and electricity and all of my bills and training became something that I couldn't afford anymore. So I stopped training around 95 ish or so, and I didn't start training again until 2005. So a good 10 year break. Wow. And I would imagine, and I think I've heard people say this, that the longer that break extends, the harder it is to start again. I would believe that. Yeah, that's you you found that too. Yeah, it was it was not easy to get back into it, but once I did, I mean, I, it stuck, so. <laughs> you know, I was talking with somebody over Twitter yesterday with with sort of the same concerns. This person's been out of training for a while. They want to get back in it, and they were all set to go to a a new school, a new class and and you know, kind of coaching them through and cheering them on. And then, you know, I, I, I got I to gotta lose weight before I start training, training again. I said, well, no, you don't. If you, if you would rather go to the gym, if you would rather focus on your fitness than martial arts, that's fine. Own that. But if you're using that as an excuse, which, I mean, let's face it, we all make excuses for a lot of things. We try to justify or rationalize our decisions or, and, and even our fears and emotions, then I, I'm, I'm not supportive of that. I, what do you think? Yeah, I, w I would agree. It's, and it's really easy to do. It's really easy to use the, an excuse of, you know, I'll go back after I do this thing. And then mm. when that thing maybe does or doesn't happen, let's say it does happen, then you come up with some other reason. Uh, you know what, I, I, I got to do this one more other thing. And this is true in life, not just training, everything. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we tend to have this idea of what training should look like. And it's usually based around what it looked like when we stopped doing it. You know, you'd reached whatever rank and standing in that school and the, the time of day and what you wore and how it fit into your life and how you felt and all of that. And let's face it, if you take a long break, none of those things are going to be the same when you step back in. It's going to be different Absolutely. people, maybe a different place, different time of day. You might have a different job. You might be shaped differently. You're older because none of us are younger as we move forward in time. <laughs> Unless your name is Merlin. That's a whole other nerdy story. So we got to get over it, right? But how do you get over it? How did you, how did you get over it? How did you start again? For, for me, the so I had two big breaks. One was 10 years, one was six years. The first one, which was 10 years, I got over it because as luck would have it, I had a good friend of mine who also had been taking a long break. And we both kind of reminisced similarly in our backgrounds and said let's 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 just do it let's just get back into it and we both started up uh with a new school uh for me it was a new style for him it was the same style um but having someone else to be at the class with certainly helped my going back on a regular basis it i i liken it it's very akin to having a workout buddy if you're going to the gym yep yeah. And I think anybody who's taught for a while, who's had their own school, sees the retention rate of groups that start together, even if they don't know each other, people that are similar in age or at least interest coming in, starting roughly at the same time, they support each other. And Absolutely. Yeah. When you're coming in, I'm, so you said you're starting a, a different school, different style. So your expectations are probably all over the place and your fears mm -hmm. maybe are all over the place. You know, how am I going to fit into this? I used to be pretty good and now it's been a while and, and all that. And why does my belt not fit anymore? <laughs> Differently shaped. We, we mentioned, um, I, I think it, it's a scary thing. And to acknowledge that it's scary, I, I don't think means you can't or shouldn't do it, right? Fear, overcoming yeah. fear is, is not only part of martial arts, but life. Sure. That's how you grow as a person. One of the strategies I've used, because I haven't taken long breaks, but I have started training in other schools, and that's scary. And I can only imagine that it gets scarier the longer it's been. I try to set my expectations stupidly low. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't even show up wearing uh, a uniform, a gi, a dobok, whatever you call it in your school. I don't even show up with one when I start training in a new school. And, and let's face it, I, I literally manufacture and sell them. So it's not <laughs> that I have a shortage of them. I have a closet uh, four feet behind me with at least a dozen of them that I wear regularly. But why not, why not fly under the radar that first time? Why let everybody know what you've done? What do you think about that? Sure. I, I have mixed feelings on it. I think it, as long as you've had a discussion with the instructor and they know um, that you're coming in with experience, um, I, I think some might see that as disingenuous, as coming in and obviously having experience, but... I don't want to say pretending, but you would look like you were a rank beginner, like, oh, this is my first class and I don't know anything. And some might see that as disingenuous. But having said that, as long as you've had a discussion with the instructor and you're not trying to pull the wool over the eyes on the instructor, I, I certainly have no problem with that. For me, I've gone to other schools and talk to the instructor ahead of time and let them know that I have experience and see what they want me to do. Um, I always, since I'm now training, if I go to a new school, I always bring my black belt, but I always bring my white belt mm -hmm. and I always put that belt on first, but oh, that, yeah. you know, that's a slightly different su subject. Um, but as long as the instructor knows that you have experience, I don't think it really matters that much. Well, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna disagree a little bit here because I've had circumstances where the instructor is is so deferential to my past experience, which, you know, the whole subject here is about a break. And is my past experience going to line up with my current skill 
in confidence? Probably not. So I've, I've gone in and said, you know, I, I used to train a little bit. Or I could even make a case for not telling the instructor, not lying. You know, if someone said, have you done martial arts before? I'm not an advocate of lying. I would, I would never lie in that circumstance. But that doesn't mean I have to say, well, you know, I trained from here to here in this, in, or in this rank and this, you know, and not list out everything I've done. Because mm -hmm. again, maybe my, my anxiety at starting over in, in a new school is such that I need every advantage I can get. And knowing that, hey, you know what? I'm probably going to be able to work my way through the first day's material without looking like a goofball. Maybe that's what I need. Perhaps. I, I see that point. But look, if you look at it from the other side, if you come in, let's say there's another brand new student starting that, t that first day, has never done anything before. And they look at you and if you, because you've had training, you're clearly going to not be, you're not going to look like a first day student. That other first day student is going to look at you and go, why am I not getting this? Mm, that's a, that's a great point. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. It's, it's nuanced it at least, right? It's not, there's no easy there's answer. There's no easy answer. For sure. At all. What, what other, what other preparatory things could people do to to step into or or even before they select a school how how do you go about that how do you say you know what i'm ready to train and get what are the steps between i'm ready to start doing this again and actually getting there and getting in the door and signing up research 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 what kind of research it, it's all about knowing what you I, I would think it's all about knowing what you want as a student um, you know, for me, when I left uh, in 95 and started training again in 2005, I visited three or four different schools. I went to their websites. Uh, there, were, there were no schools in the area that, that taught the style that I had started with. So I knew right off the bat, if I was going to continue to train, I was going to have to drive three hours for class or find a school locally that was not going to be in my style. So I went to websites. I, t I sent uh, emails and called the instructors to talk to them about, you know, how does your class, you know, how does your class typically run? What does a typical class run? And for a couple of the schools, the ones that I thought, oh, you know what, this might be a class I am actually interested in. I went and watched a class and I made it very clear. I would, I just want to come and watch. I don't want to participate. Yeah. Um, and if the, if any of the instructors for me, if any instructor said, no, you can't come and watch a class. Well, that was a red flag, you know? And I think having red flags in your own head, knowing like having some sort of an idea of what, uh, what sort of answers I don't want to hear or what sort of answers would be bad. Um, I think is also a smart thing to think about ahead of time. I agree. And I think that there is a difference, although sometimes we can cloud them in our mind between a red flag of the way someone might conduct their class and us trying to lend some credence to the anxiety we might have starting back up. Sure. Oh, well, you know, they, they want me to do this or, or this happened. So that's clearly not the right place. Okay. Well, you know, there's a difference between if you're going to come, you have to participate, which I, I agree that that is not a rule that anybody should have. If, if that is a rule that you have in your school, um, I would encourage you to look at changing that. That is not the same as, well, um, if you're going to join our school, then we're going to ask you to introduce yourself to everyone. Sure. Right? Like both would cause some anxiety, but mm -hmm. one of them is appropriate. One of them is not. Yeah, Absolutely. Have you, have you had it go wrong? Um, I had some of the questions for me answered in a way that was not something I was comfortable with. Um, I asked a, you know, for me, I was not looking for a competition school. Mm. I've never been in one that's really into competition. I've, I used to do maybe one or two a year and that was it. So one of my questions was, does your school regularly attend competitions? And if the answer was yes, we go to a seven or eight as a group, as a school, then that wasn't what I was looking for. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's important to know 
the difference between this is what I'm looking for and this is unfamiliar to me, so I'm going to discount it. Sure, you could, absolutely. You could easily come from a school that didn't do any competitions, so you haven't been exposed to them, and be fearful of them. Notice how much of what we're talking about today is around fear and, and anxiety, and say, well, because that school does that, that's not something I want to do. Mm-hmm. As opposed to, it's not something I'm experienced with. I'm going to give it a try. And if it doesn't work out, then I'll go to another school. And now I will have learned something. Yeah, absolutely. But for me, it wasn't, it wasn't on the list of things that I was looking for. Um, you know, a very traditional school was something that I wanted. Um, if uh, you know, one of my questions was uh, how, on average, how long will it take to get a black belt? Mm. And some, some instructors shy away from that question. And some say one year, if you start, you can get your black belt in one year. Um, you know, nothing against those types of schools, but that wasn't a school that I was interested in. I wanted to, you know, put in more hard work to, to, for my belts. Right. And it's important to know, it's important to know. I mean, there, there are simple things and, and we've got an episode and I, I don't remember the number off the top of my head, but I'll, I'll link it in the show notes. We did an episode on choosing a school. And so all that same stuff applies, Mm -hmm. but now you've got the filters of what you've done, what you know you want, what you know you don't want, and then all the gray area in between. And, you know, I think you put it really, really well when you said, if I wanted to stay within the same school or same system, I was gonna have to drive three hours. Yep. There, and that was the case for me. I, uh, I stopped – both of the times I stopped training was essentially because I moved away. Like, mm. I mean, I stopped training because I couldn't afford it, and then a year later I moved away, so I couldn't train at that same school anyway. So, I mean, I, I, if, if I was going to stay in the same style, I was going to have to drive three-plus hours to go to that school. Yep. And I'm, a, a, I'm obviously a proponent of cross-training. Anybody who's been listening to the show for a while knows I, I find a lot of value in that. And if you've been training at a school or in a particular system for, you know, 10, 20 years, and suddenly that's not an option anymore because you've moved or the school shut down or whatever it is, and, and you have to take some break, and then you're ready to get going again, don't get bogged down in saying, this is what I have to do. I've had a number of conversations this year with people. And honestly, a lot of it's been around rank. Oh, mm-hmm. but I don't want to start over. You're starting over. Whether or not the yeah. belt around your waist is the same, you're starting over. Maybe you know and, the forms, maybe you know the techniques, maybe you even know the instructor. But if you're starting over after a multi-year or even multi-month break, it's starting over. Yeah, it's starting over. Although you have to, you ha- people have to understand that your past experience, although might not directly be in this style, will translate into whatever style you're going into. I, I I don't care what style you're going into. There's only, and I, I know I've heard it on the podcast before, there's only so many ways to kick and punch someone. Yeah. You know, so everything that you did in your previous style is going to help you in your new style. Totally agree. Good stuff, yeah. Uh, what what else? What else do we have to leave them with? I think my my major thing that I want everyone to recognize is that it is stressful. It is nerve wracking to start over in a new school, regardless of how long it's been, regardless of your age, regardless of your rank and accomplishments, regardless of your goals or location. And it's, I think it's a good example of good stuff doesn't come easy. Things worth having aren't just handed to you. And so you've got to get past that and start training again. Absolutely. And knowing, going into it, knowing what you do and don't want. And if you don't know what you want, well, that's okay. Then, you know, every school out there is a, is a possibility. If you know what you do want, then you can start eliminating the schools in the area that won't give you what you desire. Well said. All right. If anybody out there has other thoughts or maybe you have specific questions around your situation, don't be afraid to reach out. The best way to reach me, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. And of course, if it's related to this episode, I'll share it with Andrew and, and maybe we'll, we'll come up with an answer for you. Or heck, maybe you've got a whole different take on this and we'll invite you to come on the show. You're okay with that, aren't you? I am. Uh, absolutely. Cool. 
If you want to check out the show notes for this or the other episodes, see all the things we've got going related to martial arts radio, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You're going to find photos and videos and transcripts and a bunch of other stuff. And if you're down to support us and all of our work, you have some options. You can use the code podcast15 to save 15% off at whistlekick.com. You could also share this episode or any other. You could leave a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Facebook or whatever. Or you could contribute to the Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash whistlekick. And if you're out in the world and you see somebody with a whistlekick hoodie or a hat or you're training and see somebody with uh, one of those, at least for now, limited edition whistlekick belts, you know, make sure you, you say hello and introduce yourself. Maybe you've got a new training partner coming. If you've got guests or topic suggestions, let us hear them. And if you're going to follow us on social media, it's at Whistlekick. That's all for now. Until next time, train hard, smile, and Andrew, have a great day.